So we're about to enter the strange part of neutral geometry. Because, see, there's a lot of things that you think are true because you bring them with you from your high school experience. And a lot of those things that you think are true are only true in your high school geometry experience because your high school geometry experience was strictly Euclidean. So what we would like to do in this screencast and in section 4.7 of your textbook is identify those things that are Euclidean, that are equivalent to, that just might as well be the Euclidean parallel postulate. So you don't realize it when you say it, but when you say it, you're basically saying, no, 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 we've left neutral geometry and we're strictly in Euclidean geometry. Here's the one that we start with that I asked us to pay attention to when we talked about it. Uh, the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem is equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. So let's talk about what we mean here. Uh, the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem says that if you have two lines, two parallel lines, and they are cut by a transversal, then those alternate interior angles must be congruent. That's what we're saying here. Uh, that's the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem. The alternate interior angles theorem says if you have two lines, they're cut by a transversal, and the alternate interior angles happen to be congruent, then the lines are definitely parallel. What we're saying is if the converse is true, if parallel lines lead to congruent alternate interior angles, then that might as well be the Euclidean parallel postulate. And the Euclidean parallel postulate says if you have a line and a point not on the line, there is exactly one parallel to the line through the point. So these proofs are weird because First of all, equivalence implies that we prove that one implies the other and the other implies the one. Then the proofs are weird because the thing that we're assuming is a conditional and the thing that we're proving is a conditional. So let's do them. Let's go this way first. Let's assume the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem. So we assume that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles must be congruent. And then let's show that the Euclidean parallel postulate is true. The Euclidean parallel postulate says if we have a line and a point not on the line, there is one and only one parallel line to this line through that point. So how do we do that? Well, we know that there's at least one parallel line, right? We know by the double perpendicular construction that there is at least one line M through P parallel to L. The question is, can there be another? So here's the double perpendicular construction, which means there's this thing happening, no problem. There's point P. So we do the double perpendicular construction, we end up with M, great. What if there's another line, M prime, and M prime is also parallel to L? What goes wrong? Well, why can't M prime be parallel to L? Well, because we assumed the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. And in the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem, we would have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And so the alternate interior angles would have to be congruent. And then we take a look. We've got a 90 degree angle between the transversal and this ray on M. And we've got a 90 degree angle between the transversal and this ray on M prime. And that can't work. Protractor postulate says there's only one perpendicular to this 
to this line through this point. So that can't be. And so there is exactly one parallel line to this line through this point, and that's line M. Then on the other side, going the other way, we assume Euclid's parallel postulate. We assume this scenario, and we try to prove the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem. So the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem requires that there be two parallel lines, L and L prime, cut by some transversal T, and we want to show that the alternate interior angles must be congruent. So this angle has some measure. Here's what we do. Does this have to be the same as this? That's the question. OK? So we know that L prime is parallel to L. But we also know that we can build. So here's an intersection point. Oh, wow, that won't write. There we go. There's the intersection point of the transversal and L prime. We also know that we can build a line L double prime where this angle here is this angle here. And if we do that, then by the alternate interior angles theorem, the one that works in neutral geometry, L double prime must be parallel to L. Well, wait a minute. We have assumed EPP. So we have assumed that this is the only parallel to L through P. So if this is the only parallel, then this line must be that one. These are really the same line. And so go figure, the alternate interior angles must be congruent. So we assume a conditional, we prove a conditional. We assume a conditional, we prove a conditional. Incidentally, there's lots of things that are also equivalent to Euclid's parallel postulate. They come up in another screencast.